Welcome back. We're still discussing sensation and perception, and now we're about to launch into our second sense and a pretty complicated sense as well. We're going to be discussing hearing or sound or auditory, auditory sensation and perception in this video. Uh, now, again, I'm talking about my illustration skills. This was meant to be a drum set from an aerial view. So uh, uh, the bass drum, uh, the hi-hat, uh, the snare, two toms, and a crash cymbal. Uh, but it's, yeah, again, you can feel free to critique me on the illustrations. So auditory or hearing is pretty advanced sense uh, for those of us who are hearing individuals. Uh, and like, like, it also involves the use of waves. On like light waves, now we're talking about sound waves. So with regards to sound waves, they have the similar uh, wave principles as light waves. They have frequencies, which is how often they do crests and troughs, as well as wavelengths, which is the stretch of the crests and troughs. There's also amplitude, which is the height of the crests and troughs. And there is purity, which is the overlap of different waves or just the, uh, the isolation of one type of wavelength. And so with sound waves, when we hear of uh, differences in frequency and wavelength, what we're hearing is actually differences in pitch. A sound wave uh, with a very short wavelength and a high frequency, a high frequency sound wave is going to have what's known as a high pitch, so a higher octave. Sound waves with a longer wavelength and a lower frequency is going to be low pitch, so a lower octave. Uh, amplitude is going to be expressed as volume or loudness. So uh, something with high crests and low troughs and more exaggerated amplitude is going to be perceived as more loud. And something with a smaller amplitude, smaller amps, smaller volume, smaller loudness is going to be perceived as more soft. And then with purity, this is timbre. And so this is the idea that if it's the isolation of one type of sound wave, it's gonna be a more pure sound versus if it's lots of overlapping tones, it's going to have a different timbre. And timbre can really be explained through how the same note at the same pitch can sound very differently in different musical instruments. Okay, and now we're going to explain each of these just a little bit more in detail than what I just said. So with regards to pitch, so this is the high frequency, low frequency, high pitch, low pitch, we measure pitch in terms of hertz. And what we find is just like with the visible light spectrum, we're only able to understand red to violet light waves. We can't get infrared, we can't get ultraviolet. With regards to pitch, we also have a sensitive range. So humans can hear things that are between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. That's a pretty wide spectrum. We do pretty good with our hearing, but there are lots of species that can hear higher pitch than us. And if you consider bats, for example, they can hear up to 110,000. I believe on this chart we have provided, I think it is the porpoise that can actually hear the highest pitch, hearing 150,000. And so they can hear much higher, so it's going to have a higher frequency uh, than what we can hear. In terms of lower frequencies, we are pretty good at hearing low frequency uh, noises. Uh, the only animal on the chart that can hear something lower than us is, of course, the elephant, hearing just 16 hertz, and whereas humans can hear 20 hertz. And it's important to understand that the human range uh, is individual. Some individuals are less sensitive to higher pitch or lower pitch. Uh, infants tend to be born able to hear low pitch, but pretty desensitized to it, and they get more sensitized to it as they get older. And our sensitivity to different pitches does decline with age. Uh, so as we get older, uh, we may start to experience an ex exhaustion or um, we don't tend to be as sensitive to certain pitches as compared to others. So the frequency of the wavelength of sound waves really gets measured in terms of pitch and how high versus how low. And then in terms of the amplitude of sound waves, we're really talking about volume. So the loudness uh, of them. And this is when we get into talking about decibels. Now decibels, they work along that just noticeable difference principle. And that is the decibel uh, scale is not linear. It is logarithmic. So if we were to zoom in on this picture here of the different of different decibels and different loudnesses, we would find um, that one decibel is really our absolute threshold. What we define as one decibel is the human threshold for loudness. If we can't hear it, it's no decibels. A whispers uh, around 30 decibels. Uh, when we have normal conversations, uh, that's about 60 decibels, and that's a pretty comfortable loudness for our ears. 
Once we get up from there, we start to hear, you know, we're at 80 decibels, this is heavy city traffic, 100 decibels is your earbuds to the max volume. Um, pain threshold comes in around 130 decibels and firearms are 150. So if you look at these numbers on the chart, this is not a linear scale. You can't double it. What I mean by this is soft music at 40 and heavy traffic at 80. Heavy traffic is, is not considered twice as loud as soft music. It's a logarithmic scale. So as it goes up, it's going up at a nonlinear rate. And so something that's very soft versus something that's very loud, we're, as we increase the volume on a computer, for instance, we're not just increasing it uh, in a linear way, it's actually increasing it uh, by an order of magnitude. And so it's important to understand that if you think you're just increasing your headphones by a couple notches, those couple of notches are a couple of uh, exponents. Uh, so you're increasing it to certain powers of, of growth. Now in terms of timbre, uh, so timbre can really be described as the tonal color or the resonance of a sound. And if you're not into music, it's okay. Uh, the best way we can explain this is if you're playing the same pitch and the same volume on the same note on different instruments, it's going to sound slightly different. If you play what's known as a middle C on a piano versus you play uh, that on a violin versus you play that on a, on a clarinet, it's going to sound different. You don't hear the same sound. And in fact, you can probably guess the instrument. And so that's because of timbre and that's because of the purity of the note. If you think about an instrument like a violin or a harp, a string instrument, um, when you uh, play those strings, the sound waves made by the vibrations of the strings, they're much more pure. Uh, and so they're, they're going to have a certain type of, of note, or even a tuning fork, maybe it's going to be the purest one out there. But when it comes to something like a saxophone or an accordion, uh, the sound waves are uh, more complex. There's lots of different tones in those sound waves. It ricochets off the insides of the saxophone and bounces around and that's going to distort the sound waves. And it's not a bad thing, it's just going to add more complexities. So it's less of a pure tone. And so when you hear it, you may be able to uh, hear something slightly different. So it's the idea if we played the same note in lots of different instruments, in a guitar if you will, um, it's going to sound completely new. So there's, there's lots of ways you can see this in the dueling banjos, if you play the same note in a banjo versus a guitar or, or what have you. But it's the idea we can identify instruments based on how the sound waves ricochet and bounce off the, the context that instrument provides.